your uh, respective good friend Kira helped us do a little research on the uh, Hiawatha Asylum for Indians. So uh, let's educate some of the people watching this on YouTube as to what that is. Right on. Uh, and we do want to thank Kira uh, for sending me some notes to refresh me on dates so I can speak to specifically <laughs> what happened. Uh, and these are from the notes. Uh, in, in 1898, Congress authorized, and in 1903, construction was completed, and the opening was held for the Canton uh, uh, Asylum, Insane Asylum for Indians. And it became known and is remembered today primarily as the Hiawatha Asylum for Indians, the Saint Asylum for Indians. Uh, it was located in Canton, South Dakota, which is not far from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the largest city in South Dakota today. Uh, the purpose of the Insane Asylum was to uh, house uh, Indians with mental health issues as identified back in the turn of the turn of the 20th century. Um, people who were sentenced or committed to the Hiawatha Asylum uh, ranged in ages from the very young to the somewhat old. Uh, the asylum was open for 31 years. During the time it was open, due to complaints lodged by humanitarians and others sympathetic to Indians, uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs conducted an investigation and in 1927 determined that most of those being held at the asylum were not mentally ill. And as their stories emerged and were told about how they came to be committed to the asylum, it was learned that most of them refused to assimilate. These were people who held on to our traditional ways and in, in a couple instances were people who still advocated that we maintain our traditional ways and reject colonization, reject Christianity, and as much as possible seek to live in our old way of life. These were the people who were committed to the asylum, to silence that voice. It was one of the tools they use to crush us, to, to finally crush us, to crush any resistance, crush any opposition to their stated goal of fully assimilating our people and erase any traces of our ancestral heritage. The Sane Asylum was closed in 1934, but not before more than 350 of our people were committed there. During the time it was open, 121 of our relatives died at Hiawatha. They were buried in a common grave. Not very many years ago, the federal government sold the property of the asylum to the city of Canton for one dollar. And immediately, Canton went about developing the property so that today, between the fourth and fifth fairway the Canton Municipal Golf Course is the grave of 121 of our relatives. Every May there is prayers and ceremonies and commemorations held to remember their spirits, to remember what happened there. I grew up my entire teenage years. It wasn't until I was 17 years old that I learned of Hiawatha. Many people today, who are even elderly, are not aware that this asylum once existed and what happened there and what was done to us there. That those who wanted to practice our traditional spiritual ways were exiled and sent to die. It wasn't until 1978, with the enactment of the American Indian Religious Freedom Act, 
where our people finally allowed to legally open practice our spiritual and traditional ways. I was a boy of 11 years old when that happened. Before that, our spirituality was forced underground and kept alive underground. The Hiawatha Asylum and other tools of oppression used by the federal government are the reason why today we have lost so much spiritual knowledge. We were told a honey a long time ago before colonization, ceremonies were performed every day, all day in our camps and villages. Our spirituality wasn't our spirituality, it was our way of life. It was that spirit that made us such fierce resistors when they finally came to Lakota country. It was our spirituality that sustained us as long as we did and what was a futile fight against against the American Empire. Hiawatha needs to be remembered here in this camp. The spirits of those ancestors need to be remembered and asked for help with this because part of this is fighting for their memory. Part of this is passing on the history of what happened to them there. And I really do thank you, Mike, for taking the time to sit with me and allow me to speak of these things. It's hard to listen to all these horrors, you know, um, but I'm really glad that I'm able to help add a voice to this. You know, I, it's very important for history that stuff like this doesn't get forgotten. And, you know, I'm just really lucky that you know, you're willing to speak with me. I feel blessed for it. I mean, it's... I was really glad, you know, those notes that Kira sent. Mm -hmm. One of the guys quoted in there is uh, Dr. Leonard Brewer. He was a Yonkton from Yonkton. And he was also, uh, later in his life, and when, when I first met him personally, the director for the Institute of Indian Studies at the University of South Dakota in Vermilion. And his quote in there about why this, you know, they asked him, why isn't this taught? Why isn't it? And he had one, one simple answer for them. It was shame. Yeah. You know, why would you, you know, as a white American, want this in your curriculum? You control the school curriculum in this country. Not anymore for us, but you used to. And you still control it for your people. You don't want that narrative out there. You don't want people today to be watching what's happening here on the news and have this added bit of information to maybe sympathize with what's occurring here and have a greater understanding of why so many sure. of us are doing what we're doing. You know, one of the things that, uh, one of the few things that I'm good at is pattern, rec pattern recognition. And I see the same patterns from, you know, the 1800s to the early 1900s and the 21st century, you know, uh, being done over, you know. Right. Um, in the information age in the 21st century, um, the narrative is dominated and controlled just by a, a very few, but they just use a different, uh, different methodology. Now they give you too much information, and everything is done in sound bites, so people don't have any any depth of thinking or any deep analysis. It used to be. Um, the way they would achieve that same pattern would be just dominate the amount of uh, the, the information being put out, period. Right. But they can't do that anymore, so they hide it in this big cloud of white noise. Right. You know, but the but you know the end result is the same thing. You have an ignorant pop, uh, population, and it, it it amazes me that we have the total sum of human knowledge at our fingertips, the internet. But instead of looking at uh, this video, you know, people would rather watch a video about uh, cats walking across a, a keyboard, you know, like, oh, look at this cute little animal, or, you know, hey, uh, you, you know, there's videos of people farting, you know, that have, you know, three million views, like, that. that's, we're, we're, we're really devolving into a, a version of the movie Idiocracy, I don't know if you've ever seen that. I, I saw it on Netflix, I think, but oh. no, I haven't. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, that movie is frightening social commentary. I mean, uh, the 21st Amer American uh, society is devolving into that, and it's frightening. I mean, you laugh the first 15 minutes, but if you have like a, de a depth of thinking about um, 
the sociological comparisons that are being made in that film, it's just frightening, man. It really is. Right on. I'll have to watch it, though. No. <laughs> yes. I will. Well worth it. I'll tell you, though, I don't... I, uh... You're right about patterns. pattern that we are seeking to break here, to, to stop here, we have a, we have a real fight on our hands, I'm really, I'm really happy that I thought there was going to be a big loss from camp today after, you know, the court hearing yesterday. And I mean, in terms of people figuring, okay, we got two weeks and they were going to head out. And it and looks it, like there's more people and today. I was just going to say, <laughs> one of the most common heard <laughs> phrases this morning I heard when I was up there earlier mm -hmm. was, I'll be back. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I heard it multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be back. We'll be back. You know, uh, Did you notice the population shrinkage? Cause I well, really you see, that's what I'm going to leading into here, yeah is that okay so it, it did we kind of looked around this morning uh kai and quincy and i and uh, mm -hmm. all right they were gone but then all day just more 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 and then finally when there was still a good crowd the kickapoo show up <laughs> you know and they got three big uh uh like suburban type vehicles full of people each one pulling a trailer full of supplies and mm -hmm. camping and then a few cars in tow besides that great big cars at least 30 of them that i could count and they're camp, yeah. they're camped just to our north over here well we could use part of this conversation to squ uh, squish some rumors you know um in my social networks i went to the cas casino today and, and peeked around and people are still freaking out about the evil evil law enforcement and Mobile county that's, commands, that's yeah. stolen your water and and, and and taking your medical care well you know people on the internet the the tribes have gotten together and there's uh ems vehicles parked up there there's big water tanks and beside all the porta potties there are these big mounds of bottled water at all the porta potties you know i mean there's more water than people know what to do around here and it has to do with mutual aid you you what what 70 nations now 71 71 nations <laughs> now all helping each other through mutual aid 